Warm welcome to this my lecture on finite difference method for solving one dimensional heat equation using MATLAB. In our previous lecture, we delved into the concept of finite difference approximation and explored its practical applications. Now let's shift our focus to the implementation aspect. We will be dividing into the practical realm by discussing the implementation of finite difference method for solving the one dimensional heat equation using MATLAB. Uh, we are implementing finite difference difference method for one dimensional heat equation which is defined at this place curl u upon curl t is equal to alpha curl to u upon curl x square where u x t is the temperature at position x and time t and alpha is thermal diffusivity constant in this partial differential equation we will discretize the domains so first uh, we will divide the special domain into discrete points with the step size delta x equal According to the definitions which we discussed in the previous lecture, curl to u upon curl x square will be approximate to ui plus 1 minus 2ui plus ui minus 1 upon delta x square. Divide the time domain into discrete points with the step size delta t and curl u upon curl t will be approximate to ui n plus 1 minus ui n upon delta t. So this is based on the forward finite difference scheme and this is the central finite difference scheme both will be used to discretize the given partial differential equation put these values in the given equation after putting the values of the finite difference scheme for both curl u upon curl t and curl to u upon curl x square in left hand side as well as on the right hand side the equation reduced to in this form after solving the above equation in uh, for ui n plus 1 the equation will be reduced into in this form and this is the required iterative form by using this equation we can easily apply the finite difference scheme to find out the solution for its domain now it is important to convert this equation in matlab syntax and this is very quite simple this expression we can write as ui n plus 1 is equal to this expression we will write as u i n then we have alpha product dt upon dx square then again we have product and u i plus 1 comma n minus 2 u i n then we have plus u i minus 1 now we want to implement to finite difference method to solve the uh, given problem which is curl u upon curl t is equal to alpha curl to u upon curl x square where 0 less than x t less than 1 the size of x and t both are lies between 0 and 1 so the x is the length of the road and we note in a parametric form l is equal to 1 which is the length of the road and the total time we have is 1 uh, as we have the domain and the value of alpha we have suppose that 0 0.01 which is a thermal diffusivity constant the, uh, now we need to discretize this domain and for that we are choosing an x is equal to 5 which is the number of a special grid uh, here is this is the x and in this direction and uh, uh, we have this is the 0 and this is 1 so uh, if we have n, a, n x is equal to 5 okay then uh, dx dx will be equal to l upon nx and we will have 1 upon 5 is equal to 0 0.2 so we have this point is 0 0.2 then we have 0 0.4 then we have 0 0.6 this is the 0 0.8 and at the end we have 1 and uh, this is the step size for each sub interval if we assign the index for this line we have 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 this last value we have is equal to n x plus 1 the value of n x we have is 5 okay and uh, 1 so the number of point will be equal to 
nx plus 1 for this interval. Similarly, if we are choosing the value of nt is equal to 10, which is the number of time step, then dt will be equal to t upon nt. This is the time step size. And corresponding to this, if uh, we have the x line space, x line space will be equal to 0 to L and these are the total number of points. So the number of points here we have is 6. You can see observe in this uh, explanation and uh, uh, this is the special grid. Similarly, we can have the time grid which will be uh, 0 to t and the number of point will be n t plus 1 where a value of n t we have is equal to n t plus 1 is equal to 11. Uh, by using all these we have the matrix and uh, the size of matrix will be n x plus 1 and n t plus 1. The value of n x plus 1 we have is 6. That of n t plus 1 we will have 11. So this matrix will be generated by using this uh, special grid as well as time grid. Now for both, uh, we need to calculate the values at this place. The index, uh, this is the point 0 and this is the 1 and in this direction we have is x. In this direction we are choosing t. This is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. 0 0.8 and then we have 1. So index at the place is 1, 1 of oh, this is 2, this is 3, 4, 5, and 6. And similarly, in this direction, we have is uh, dt. The value of dt will be equal to uh, we have is 1 upon 10, which is 0 0.1. So here this is 0 0.1. This will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, this is 0 0.4 and so on. At the end we have at this place 1. And the index uh, will be uh, here, the index will be 1, 2, 3 and so on. Okay. Now at this point. Okay. So here uh, then after you need to jump at here. See this diagram at this place and uh, uh, from the grid point we can easily observe that this is the value of x uh, index 1. Uh, this is the index 2, index 3, index 4, index 5 and nx plus 1. So these are the index with respect to x and uh, on the vertical line 1, 2, t and n t plus 1 these are the index with respect to t now what about u11 u21 u31 u41 u51 and this is the last point these are the values of uxt function and these values we can easily obtain by using the given initial condition. The uh, give, uh, initial condition we are given here is ux0 is equal to sine pi x. So this is the initial condition. Okay. And uh, what about this one? This is the first index. Okay. So when t is equal to 0, the index will 1. So for this, uh, in the form of index, we will use uh, this is the u1 and 1. So when time is 0, the index is 1. Okay. And here we have a sign. And here when index is 1, the meaning is that the value of x here is 0. So here a sign 0 is equal to 0. Similarly, we can compute the value at this place. u21. So the what is the meaning of u21 is the u21 means u and uh, second index we have is 0 0.2 and 1 means the value of t which is 0 and when you will use this one we can compute the value from this equation by putting these values sine of pi into 0 0.2. 
So all these values which are on the horizontal line easily can be computed by using this expression. Now all these values are the initial values and initial conditions. By using these values we need to compute these values which are easily can be computed by using the iteration and uh, the iteration is completely based on the finite difference scheme. So these values are required. Now the thing is how we can compute all these values using MATLAB program. So this is the initial condition and uh, for the given problem uh, ux0 is equal to sine pi x which can be written as in the MATLAB syntax u0 is equal to sine pi product x. Pi is inbuilt function in the MATLAB. To initialize the solution matrix we need to generate zero matrix and you can see that uh, that can be easily generated by using the zeros function and uh, nx plus 1 and t plus 1 this is the size of the matrix according to the line space here you can see now to initialize the condition we have u colon 1 u0 the meaning of u colon 1 is when t is 0 we need to compute all the values for x from 0 to 1 at each point which divide the given interval okay now we need to apply the finite difference method and this is the required equation and in the form of uh, matlab syntax you can see this equation ui n plus 1 is equal to ui n plus alpha dt upon dx square product ui plus 1 n minus 2 ui n plus ui minus 1 n okay so this is the entire equation is written at this place you can see now the most important thing is that how we can apply the for loop for <coughs> these values so we need to check very carefully this is the initial condition this is the initial condition for t equal to zero and all the points are computed from uh, from 0 to 1 so the uh, for the finite difference method uh, for loop uh, n will vary from 1 to t so when we will have n is equal to 1 this will give t equal to 0 okay so from this uh, these values we need to compute this value okay here index is 1 for t and here is index 2 and this will be computed when we have n is equal to 1 Okay, so that's why the loop will work from n equal to 1 to nt. And when you will put nt at this place, that will be the last end point, nt plus 1. And for all these values, we need to compute interior point. So these values are required. Okay, except this point and this point. For that, the loop will vary from i equal to 2 to nx see this is the point index is 2 and this is the index nx and this is the index nx plus 1 okay so uh, these loops are implemented and uh, after that uh, we need to generate mesh grid and uh, this will be possible for xt is equal to this is the mesh grid and as we already discussed in the 3d plotting 2d plotting everything we have discussed just new we need to apply at this place and uh, these are the statement to plot the graph so first is so we are generating here a surface x comma t and u dash then we have the x label y label z label title box on and grid on so these are the required sequence of statement uh, this will plot the graph but all the values corresponding to x and t will be stored in this function. Now we need to execute this sequence of statement to check the result. And here when we will uh, execute this sequence of statement by press at this place and you can see that we have this graph. When we have is uh, at this uh, in this diagram we can easily observe that when 
for all the values of uh, t when x is 0 the function u x t is 0 and also when we have x is equal to 1 on the right end point for all the values of t u x t is also again 0 and uh, the other uh, at the other point uh, between uh, except 0 and 1 we have non zero values and we have this 3d plot now if uh, you want to manipulate we can increase and decrease the uh, number of grid points uh, we are choosing here zero and uh, that of uh, nt the num uh, number of time steps we have is 100 and again when we will execute this sequence of statement you can see that we have the same graph and uh, you can easily check all the values in this diagram by rotating in any direction. This lecture a primary focuses on implementing the finite difference method using MATLAB. After grasping the concept of a finite difference approximation, we proceed by discretizing the given partial differential equation and then converting it into MATLAB computing program. This process is detailed step by step for clarity as we delve into more examples with varying complexities we gain a deeper understanding of this approach if you have any question feel free to ask and share them with us following the several examples we hold a live session to address any lingering doubts all the supportive content for this lecture have been uploaded you can download for your use thank you for listening tentatively until the end of this lecture